Dicey's Market from New Crippin. Well, what an interesting year this has been. <laughs> it really has. Uh, and what are we heading towards? Now, I always say to look out for warning signs. And I believe there's a big warning sign what's happening now. Now, you know, we always say that uh, in any crisis, no matter what happens, uh, it doesn't take too long for anarchy to happen. Fuel shortages at the moment. <laughs> Look at the, uh, the behavior of some people trying to get petrol. Now, obviously, <laughs> I'm not trying to say I told you so, but it doesn't take long for people to start acting irrationally uh, and you see the nasty side of people coming up so my thoughts on the potential future and uh, how we've gone on from uh, this uh, COVID well, do you know, I mentioned ages ago about warning signs and I mentioned uh, about uh, the, uh, I was going to say New World Order, but it's the, uh, the other mob. If you remember what they were saying, now look at what's happening. The biggest way of people uh, or businesses and companies, the uh, global elite, to get hold of all your money is by uh, fabricating a strife, should I say. Uh, so, with the driver shortages, something just niggled me uh, for there to be such a shortage of petrol pumps <clears throat> now they were saying there was a driver shortages and we've been hearing it slowly about oh there's going to be driver shortages for this there's going to be driver shortages for that and in some cases you did start seeing not as much stock on shelves so it was running out quicker uh, for the pumps to run out like they did it was probably uh, scaremongering and people going overboard in buying their uh, buying the fuel because a month earlier there was always petrol uh, as far as I know that I could be wrong but there was always petrol at pumps you know and you didn't hear of any garages running out of petrol. Uh, jump forward to this month, well, all of a sudden, there's loads of petrol short uh, pumps closed. Where did all the drivers go in that space of their, like the two, three months? You know, so is it, that there was driver shortages because now it seems fine because you know uh, fuel's getting there you know uh, but I think there's the, the, a bigger picture what what's not being portrayed in any of the news outlets really during the course of the COVID period obviously we was in lockdown a lot of people were on furlough so people weren't driving as much so there weren't such a demand on petrol now furloughs ended uh, people were supposed to be back at work <laughs> I bet a lot of them have actually been laid off now <clears throat> you know so with People starting to go back to work, they obviously buying petrol. Yes, okay, could have been an uptake in that. But what if it wasn't, you know? 
and what was said to be mismanagement of uh, Aldrin supplies because obviously it's like uh, the whole economy and everything is run on just in time which just in time doesn't really work all the time you know you do need to have that surplus just in case things happen now we've got a, we're coming into winter and there's an energy shortage you know uh, all uh, the your electrics going to be going up. Uh, we just had a letter saying our electric supply is going to go up as of from next week. That's not going to be the f uh, the last time that's going to go up before Christmas. Uh, now our famous wind turbines. They claim, the people in charge of them, they haven't produced enough energy because we haven't had wind. Oh, wow. Who would have thought it? Uh, the Atlantic not having wind because we are. You know, the Atlantic's just there, you know, and most of these wind farms were off the coast, and especially in Scotland. They're in the Atlantic and there's no wind to generate enough power so if there's not enough power we're buying power from Europe yes now because of Brexit we're not in that single market of, buy, uh, of uh, buying energy so we have to uh, go on an auction to buy it so we are paying more for the energy or gas than we would have done before Brexit. Hey ho! But that will reverse when we've got a surplus of energy. So they will, uh, Europe will buy energy off of us and they will pay an higher price. But at the moment, yes, I will give that one because of Brexit. This is our, uh, we're paying more for our energy. But for all uh, remainers, don't jump up and down and say, yeah, we told you so. Because there's a bigger picture here. Why have we suddenly been so short on energy? You know, um, seem to be short on fuel. Uh, seem to be short on energy now. Going into winter. Uh, and the energy's not just Britain and Europe. America's short on energy. Uh, you got China short on energy, and uh, I've seen some reports that China is uh, uh, cutting back on its uh, supply of energy to traffic lights. That's a major uh, thing to do to say, well, we're not going to have uh, traffic lights. Now, it could be, I know in some parts of Germany, traffic lights are only there for generally when there's traffic so during the night the traffic light lights won't work in England they just have traffic lights working all through the night uh, so the Chinese government are saying we're gonna buy coal great so the price of coal is gonna be going up now because China's not gonna buy one or two bags of coal they're gonna buy containers for all you know, and as we're not even getting into winter, they're gonna be buying tons upon tons of this, you know, and they've got the money to do it, so they're gonna do it, you know, no matter what the cost of the coal will be, but that will leave a shortage of coal elsewhere because they're gonna be buying it. So that's gonna put the price up just before winter. <clears throat> Electric supplies are going up just before winter. Uh, we've got over in uh, Northern Ireland, we have oil heaters, you know, oil tanks to uh, heat our homes. Oil's going up, you know. So, uh, sorry, just need to put the light back on. So, there's a lot of things happening at the moment. So, for anyone who's not already prepared, uh, I've I'm not saying please 
I'm not saying to go out and rush to buy coal or your logs if you're living over in Northern Ireland because uh, obviously over in mainland Britain uh, you don't have fires anymore in your homes it's all done by either gas centrating or electric centrating so you will be a bit uh, scuppered uh, to try and uh, keep your houses warm especially with the prices going up and it could get to the stage where you may have to choose heat or food because there's only so much money especially if some people have been laid off because the uh, the furlough what was paying you is no longer paying you and you haven't got a job and a sudden influx of people who haven't got jobs into the market there's not enough jobs there because business is already cut back because we've gone through all these lockdowns because they, they don't want the staff or they re uh, rework their processes so they don't need as much staff and believe me businesses will make do just to save more money they're not going to spend money on Joe blogs you know if they don't need to and it really started ringing the alarm bells now I've just heard and I'll put the link in below uh, this guy Jeff excellent video he yes he's more right-wing uh, and he was a uh, Brexiteer but he does do uh, he does cross -re uh, cross reference and make sure what he says is factually right and he does come up with some good bits now he's just pointed out that Lloyds Bank are going to be buying houses to rent them out okay but one in four mortgages are bought by Lloyd uh, are done sold by Lloyds hmm as he said alarm bells now that rings alarm bells for me now generally you miss three payments three months on a mortgage and then you start getting letters or final notice you know the first time you missed they're gonna send you a payment straight out uh, a letter straight out saying you know you're behind by one month two months it's a stronger worded letter can you come in and see us For three months you've got to be extremely lucky if they don't try and say we're gonna foreclose on your mortgage and we're gonna want you to be out if they're gonna start buying houses to rent out that would be the perfect opportunity for them to turn around and say well why don't we buy your house and you can live there as a, a tenant your pride and joy your house your flat bungalow now belongs to the bank and you're just a tenant all your hard savings because obviously if they've gone in and bought your house they're not going to be paying top dollar for it top pounds you know and this is going to go out for everywhere if it's if it's they're talking about doing it here they'll be talking about doing it everywhere you know now with the way things are going we are due for a, house, a slum in house prices which we've not had since 2007-2008 and that was due to a crash by banks in America and that uh, the crash in the housing market was for over a year so we're due for one coming up because we obviously that was 2007-2008 the last one was in the 80s so that was what uh, I can't remember exactly when in the 80s but if you say like it was like 20 odd years yeah well 2007 we're in 22 now or approaching 22 now so we're only five years off from the la uh, for that 20 year, 20 year gap between the last two crashes so potentially we could go into a crash a bit earlier especially the way things are and especially if there are people moving the chess pieces to false 
a crash, you know, to get their own agenda through. Now, if you watch some of other videos, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's sad, you know. All everyone who's worked so hard for their own homes now could lose their homes. You know, they already said that uh, the government's putting new uh, policies forward for the old people. You would get your care, all the care you need. Have the extra aspirin, have the walking stick, you know, have silk, you know, linen for your bed, you know. We could put, we don't worry about paying us now because your house, we can take it once you've gone, you know. And, but we'll still leave some for your relatives of 20 grand. So if your house is worth, quite a lot of houses in the UK now are worth what well over a hundred to two hundred grand, you know. Especially if you live in London, it's like two hundred, like a quarter of a million to half a million. Some areas of London, you know, you're already only guaranteed to pass on to your relatives twenty grand, because the rest of it will be eaten up, and you will find the prices will go up, you know, of your care, if you've got a house and they can get it you know they'll make sure that you've spent that money you know so they can get that for their own pockets and leave your relatives nothing and that'll be another house which would be sold off and the banks will buy it up because they will rent it out and you know i feel sorry for all these small uh the quite a lot of pensioners who uh was fooled into buying a house and using it as a pension because it always be an income property always goes up well no it doesn't always go up it goes up to a point then it goes down for a little while then it starts going back up and if you've got equity in it that's the bit what's gone down yeah it never goes down on what you owe it's always the equity what disappears first so you generally always owe money and it's just a, a, a crime because they're forcing their, that agenda so you'd own nothing and be happy that was was their words and there was such a backlash on it I don't know how they could ever think you know that people will be happy owning nothing but they'll be happy you know, uh, price of fuel going up, you know, and it will be going up to stop us driving. You know, if you can't afford your cars now because you've lost a job, they're going to go. Yeah, you're going to get a bad credit rating. So you might not be able to get a new one. You always have to buy a second hand one. And then they're going to do away with a second hand car saying, oh, you've got to be electric, which you're paying through the nose for. There's big wheels working behind all this, believe me. Now, yes, you could turn and say I'm just a conspiracy, a uh, doomsayer. I don't, personally, personally, I don't care what they do. I'm quite happy. You know, uh, I've got my plan for what's going to happen. Uh, and I'm in a good position where I'm mortgage free. So, I don't have to worry about the banks trying to reclaim it. I have to worry about the government's trying to reclaim it somehow. <sighs> what can I say? So, as I said, this is a warning sign, uh, a very big warning sign of what's coming. So it's gonna be a very harsh winter. Uh, and if you've been watching one of the channels, what I recommend to watch, uh, Math Star Observatory uh, Polar Shift. Uh, the, we're, I believe, we was 13 months away from. Sorry, get the black light. Uh, 13 months away, I believe it is, from hitting the 40 degree mark. <clears throat> Personally, I don't know what would happen. 
I get the principle of that 40 degree mark uh, and if you don't understand about the 40 degree mark uh, when it comes to the uh, polar shift uh, not polar shift magnetic shift uh, please go to his channel I'll make sure the link is down below uh, he does explain it far better he's a uh, not a professional scientist but he's just as good as any professional scientist he does explain it uh, they, he believes it would suddenly start shifting and the way he's demonstrated it with magnets okay feasible possible yeah uh, will it affect us on the ground I don't know uh, I don't think so in any dangerous manner apart from if you happen to be flying that night when it does move a lot uh, you might not end up where you're supposed to be ending up you might end off a couple hundred miles away uh, at a different airport but the old boys on the old computers and Matt's one of them who uh, reset uh, the, the programming for the global positioning malarkey he's probably going to leave a comment and saying it's not malarkey it's uh, something else uh, but yeah, uh, so that's happening in less than two years, 13 months, even a half, less than that. So we're living through that. For me, I find it quite exciting to be going through that because uh, it's the first time that we can actually document it. Now, we know that the polar shifts have moved in the past because we can, uh, we've tested rock and the magnetic pulling rocks around the world so we know it does move now I was talking to my wife uh, she, she is very smart but I put a proposal for her now this is out there and I have got no evidence to support this but it's just a thought what come into my mind could the Magnetic, I know Matt, uh, Rich is going to leave that one in. Cheers, mate. Uh, the magnetic shift be affecting the uh, Gulf Stream. And the reason why I'm bringing this question up is the magnetic shift will move theoretically it could mean that they that area becomes cold and that's where the new ice packs would move around because obviously we know that uh, Egypt and the Sahara Desert used to be uh, green it used to have tree uh, trees and plant life uh, and it rained a lot because of the rain damage on the Sphinx so if over a period of a long time say the magnetic pull moved and it changed the Gulf Stream from back then could that become a desert because of that so could somewhere else be the desert you know and since the Black Forest in you know uh, Central Europe could have been a desert at one point and now it would become green do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it was, but do you know if you understand what I'm trying to say, uh, things could move around, uh, like seasons, move around. So, if you look at how our seasons roughly been, they are a bit skew with. Could that be to do with the magnetic pull? Uh, what's, hap uh, the, uh, what's happening? And I know there's going to be some people saying, uh, "No, you're bonkers." No. You know, absolutely off your rocker. But it's questions what we can ask for some brighter person to do the calculations and to come up with a paper. He might even get some award or do you know what I mean? Uh, but 
I've not heard anyone say anything about this, one way or the other. Uh, NASA's not really saying anything about uh, the polar shift. They know it's happening, uh, but they don't want to scaremonger. Which is true, and most governments won't want to scaremonger because you see, you see what happens when scaremongering. Oh, we're going to be short of petrol. We've got no petrol. Garages are running out. Everyone starts going out, trying to beat up people. I even saw one clip of some fruitcake with a knife. You know, why? And it doesn't help when you got twats uh, sitting in the middle of roads. Uh, saying uh, uh, well, was, these are insulating people want your every house to be insulated I think I just can't be asked with them I really can't uh, most of them are hypocrites they would have drove a car to that point and they all say oh we've got to be eco-friendly and do you know the biggest people who say they've got to be eco-friendly use more uh, they've got they have a more carbon footprint than most other people so, you know, Elon Musk, come on, let me have a, a seat on your rocket and take me to Mars, because uh, I've lost all hope with people on this planet, I really have. Uh, I feel sorry for Mars, for us going to there. Uh, I know it's gone off top topic, but uh, it's... What can I say? It's just the, the way the governments are and the powers what they've got could be leading to people suffering this winter. Uh, obviously, Melbourne. You, if you've not seen Melbourne, I would urge you to find uh, just type up Melbourne, uh, Melbourne and their sixth lockdown and see if you can work out why they're, in, they're going into a sixth lockdown. Uh, because the stats on uh, their deaths, uh, I believe, don't quote me, there's been like two deaths in three months, I believe, I could be wrong. Uh, the number of cases have gone up, yes, I will accept that. But they went through a, a double jab and they're trying to enforce the, the double jab a lot more. And they're blaming construction workers. Uh, but construction workers work outside, you know, and as long as they're generally two meters away, uh, I thought that was the ruling. And you know, unless COVID's changed, uh, so but look it up. Just type up on Google, you know, uh, Melbourne six lockdown, Melbourne riots, uh, Melbourne uh, freedom marches. There's a lot there, and a lot of people don't know it's happening. Uh, and it's not just in Melbourne. It's like, it's like France is still having marches, but we don't see that. We don't see because they don't want more people being more confident. They're saying, "No, enough is enough." You know, and that's what they don't want. You know, the governments want that. You're gonna stay under my thumb. <sighs> what can I say? Yeah, well, someone's going to bite your thumb off, you know, and the crunch will be next year. It really will. When when people start losing their homes and going through uh, the heartache of a, uh, the winter, because believe me, with the price of fuel going up, uh, the price of uh, your electric going up, there will be a lot more deaths this year due to the cold than normal and they will, they can try and put it down to uh, COVID if they want but it's not you know there will be more old people affected this year than ever you know and You know, I know I've been rambling, uh, but I thought I'd just do this uh, little topic. 
on a warning signs and hopefully Rich, the man, will be a big red warning sign. Warning, warning, ship has officially hit the fan. Will all preppers please proceed to your bug out shelters? No, because that's just clickbait. We should, uh, we're not trying to do clickbait, we're not trying to scare people. We're just trying to give people a bit of a head up, you know, what could potentially come about. Now, again, please don't go out panic buying. We don't know when it's going to happen, how f uh, far into next year. But winter is here now, so you've got to be prepared for winter. And be prepared of power failures or power cuts, you know. Uh, even though your local MP say, no, this was never going to happen. And if they're a Lib Dem, there's never going to be a EU army. Hmm, okay. It's on its way. You can see it. they're already talking about it. So, don't trust your MPs, and because half the MPs don't know what the internal cabinet's doing, because they're being told what to do by uh, big tech, you know, and it's sad, you know, you know, it's greed, you know, and it is greed, you know. Uh, these big tech companies they preach about how others should live but they don't live the same way you know they want everything to be uh, they want to be up there in their ivory towers and look down at us peasants you know and you know you got the likes of uh, uh, The Facebook either Giza Mark or whatever his name is. I'm not going to pronounce it because you're already going to laugh because I'm not going to pronounce it right. He won't let his children go on Facebook. Not to, they're not going to have a Facebook account. Why? Because he knows what goes on behind the scenes. You know, uh, that should be a big issue for everyone. If the owner of Facebook won't let his own children have a Facebook account, you know. But yet we go on there. We all want those likes. Oh, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Hypocrite, I know. But <sighs> you're liking the content of what we're doing. Uh, me standing there looking pretty and say, give me a like. That's for me own vanity. You know, this is me trying to help and warn people uh, and hopefully get you through these next troubling months of this winter. And yeah, what more can I say? But just be prepared, you know, uh, keep warm this winter because you're going to need it. Uh, Don't go panic buying because you don't need to. Uh, unless there's, unless you know your favourite biscuits is going to be off the shelves for a couple of months, and you think, well, I'm going to buy a couple of extra packets. Do you know what I mean? The chances are that they're going to be back on the shelf the following day because just in time they will get them back in, or it's the day after. Uh, but just re do your shopping at a different time, you know. The stock always comes in at night. So first thing in the morning, or even like Tesco's is open through the night and they're filling the shelves up when you're there. So you go there at one o'clock in the morning, or uh, you know, or f four o'clock in the morning if you get up early. Go and do your shopping then. <laughs> There'll be hardly anyone else there. You can have the supermarkets for yourself. You know, uh, it's not so good if you're, especially uh, like over here, most supermarkets are not open. 24-7 over here but I know where I used to live uh, in Sunbury uh, te uh, Tesco's was open Asda's was open 24-7 so there's the supermarkets what are open 24-7 so just retime it you know if you think you've got a better chance of getting the stuff that you want but get your normal amount you don't need to over, over go it uh, over 
go overboard. Uh, get some woody jumpers, you know, so you could turn down your heating so you don't cost as much and just have a woody jumper. Or like me, I've got like a, a furry blanket, you know, uh, my kids are in bed now, uh, my wife's in bed, so I turn down the heating because it's just me up and just trying to save that bit of money because Christmas is coming and the kids are more important than me being warm you know this blanket does me good enough we just have to change our ways we do it and it's like sticking your fingers up at the power companies because if I'm using less electric now I'm not paying them you know and I can keep that bit of money soy uh, itchy eye Ugh. and for those big companies who want me to put them uh, more and more power on and uh, for them to get richer and richer uh, hello I'm not gonna do it so it's tough with a capital T so at that point uh, T sounds good to me I might go and make myself, make myself a cup uh, I will be getting back out in the woods I want to uh, do an overnighter uh, with Rich maybe or maybe on my own uh, very soon and yeah so Rich did mention in one of the last videos just quickly mention this uh, I got married and that was excellent lovely day uh, been ill not with Covid uh, so that, uh, that took a toll on me for a little while but that's all done and I should be back out so, thumbs up. Uh, keep the brave, brave, keep the brave face on. And as I say, thank you for watching. Uh, it's Mark from Newbie Prepping. Uh, if you do did like this content and found it good content uh, and found it very uh, helpful uh, or useful, uh, please like. Leave a message down below if you've seen uh, signs of what I've been talking about. Because it'd be handy to see. If other areas, you know, I, I know some subscribers are from America, uh, other countries, even got some guys from Australia. Uh, just let us know uh, how things are with views. Uh, if there's been uh, price hikes going up or stuff, what just mm, not too sure about. Let us know. Be interesting to see and uh, be safe out there and uh, I'll talk to you soon bye